Hey, this is OJ. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. Today is our very first podcast. I have no idea why it took me this long to get get around to doing this stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm good. We're going to do a how it works first, and uh, what this is, we're going to actually be like the Facebook of podcast. You know, only difference is we're not looking to date anybody. Okay. Uh, there's uh, no end to the subject matter. This is so exciting. I mean to tell you, uh, there is as many topics as, as there are people out here. And uh, I want to touch on communication real quick. Uh, I've got some personal experience with this. Uh, I'm reaching out to different outfitters, to different uh, people with TV shows, uh, just uh, product manufacturers, people like that. And boy, I'll tell you what, anymore, these people are really hot. Uh, I've even had trouble getting a hold of like the NRA. You know, I want to work with them. You know, but um, there's no email address that you can reach anybody. There's no 800 numbers where you can talk to anybody. We are absolutely different. You know, uh, you can reach us by letter. You can reach us by email. You can reach us by cell phone. You know, uh, if you want to talk to me personally, you're going to get a chance to do that. Now, I, I may not always be the one that answers the phone, but if you leave a message or something, I will get back to you. But again, don't be surprised if I'm not the one that picks up the phone. So, just saying, get in touch with us. Communicate with us. That's what this whole thing is about. You're going to see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. There's some really um, uh, interesting things. Uh, we're going to be interactive, you know, and that that's, you know, oh, let's just get to it. Uh, this is huge. We're going to have guest speakers. Uh, we're going to do live shows. Uh, that we, we do have some simple rules and uh, everything will be run through moderators. You know, and uh, there's, there's, uh, we're not going to obviously have bad language. That's a no-no. Uh, nothing suggestive, nothing political. Now, uh, when it comes to God, uh, if you have a problem with God, you probably need to turn off right now because we'll probably be talking about him a whole bunch. You know, he has been there for me my entire life, even before my faith was as strong as it is today. And uh, my feeling is if I can't stand up for him now, how do I ever expect him to stand up for me again on anything? So, yeah, we'll be talking about God. If that isn't for you, well, there's other channels that probably you know, you'd enjoy more. So, but we're going to be talking about God. Um, we're, we're going to have multiple streams. Now, this, this is my concept. We aren't going to have just one stream. We're going to have multiple streams, you know, and I'll show you what I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Uh, this is a deal where your thoughts matter. Um, where, you know, you need to be active and you can be active in more than just one stream. You may have something of a particular interest but when you start looking at some of these other streams, you're going to say, oh, wow, you know, I, I, have, I have something that I need to say about that. Get involved. Get in that stream. You know, if there's a stream, or, I mean, if there's something that you have on your mind that there, we don't have a stream on, get in touch with us. We're going to create one. You know, we'll do this stuff together. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Uh, share, uh, share your story uh, with, with some of the, uh, your followers on here. You know, uh, expect comments. You know, uh, uh, if you have an adventure of some kind that you want to share, expect comments. If you want to ask for advice on something, do that and expect comments, you know, because that's what we're doing here. Um, the, all right, let, let's just get to it. Uh, we got some conversation openers, and I've got, I just, to start things off, I, I started six different categories. Uh, the very first one is largest buck, second one is largest bass, the next one is vacation, and then we've got Sturgis, you know, uh, motorcycle rally in, in North Dakota or South Dakota up there, and then Bigfoot, and then uh, Wild Game. But just to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing here, we'll go back to largest buck, uh, and I will have these different questions listed under each category to kind of kick this off and get things started. Uh, what was the score of your largest buck? Uh, what state did you take it in? Uh, was, was the season, did you use a, a bow and arrow, a gun, a crossbow, a rock, a spear? Yeah, how'd you take that deer? Uh, did you get film or pics? You know, 
that would be for the largest buck. Bass, uh, what, what was the weight? What state? Was it spring, summer, fall that you caught it in? Film or pick? And uh, did you catch and release? You know, did you catch that fish and release it? Now, um, for me personally, I generally, the bigger ones, I let them go. You know, I try and get a picture of them first, but I let them go. Uh, I personally like the more pan-sized fish, you know, for, for taste, for eating. You know, the two to three pound bass are, I mean, gosh, you can't beat those. You know, that's just, a, that's just an example of what we're talking about here. Number three is vacations. Uh, what was your best one ever? You know, uh, where did you go? Uh, what, what kind of an event was it? Um, was it long or short? Now, a couple of ideas here. When I was a kid, we went to the same place every year on vacation. That wasn't a problem for me. We went fishing in Minnesota. Our, our whole family did. Uh, Dad would save nickels, dimes, and quarters in a big jar. And he'd usually end up with about 150 bucks in there by the end of the year. That paid for the cabin. You know, what we had to eat whether we're there or at home, you know, so fishing licenses and a few things like that's really all we had to buy. He pretty much had it covered. Pretty smart guy, you know, but uh, that's, that was probably one of the better times of my life, you know, as a kid going on vacation, stuff like that. And boy, have I got some memories on that. We can share a bunch of those later. But uh, the long or short part of it, now that... Uh, brings to mind a trip I, I made to Cancun. Now I went there by myself. You know, I booked it in for a week. By the third day that I was there, I had already eaten in every restaurant that they had that was available around there. I had gone to see the Mayan ruins. I'd gone downtown shopping, you know. Uh, I'd taken another tour around to a bunch of beaches and stuff. And the last, I, that was like a seven-day trip to one place. You know, I personally would never, not do it like that again. I would book three days in there, and I'd book another three days in somewhere else. You know, kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, I, at least for me personally, that, uh, that was what I did, and that, that's what I would do differently. It might be different if you had somebody with you. I just went there by myself, you know. Had a great time, but uh, could have had a better time if my little wife would have been there. But I hadn't met her yet, so, well, another story. Um, Sturgis, let's talk about that. That's coming up. Uh, have you uh, have you ever gone, you know, and do you have plans to go this year? Uh, what, what years did you go, if you did go? Uh, what do you ride? Do you have pictures of your bike? We want to see them. Uh, do you... Uh, do you uh, stay in a tent or a camper or do you rent a motel room? What, what sort of accommodations, do, if, you, if you do go, you know, and the, these are things when I said plans, there's some things here you need to really consider if you are going to go there. Uh, and that would be certainly one of them is, is your accommodations because you can either be real comfortable or real uncomfortable. Uh, are you going with a group or are you going solo? Uh, do you uh, ride your bike there or do you trailer it in? Now, there, that, that's, that's actually a really good point. A lot of people kind of look down on you a little bit if you, if you trailer your bike in, if you don't ride it in. Well, I got news for you. I am out of shape when it comes to riding my bikes. You know, that, that has come to my attention. Um, I used to be able, I would, an eight hour day, I had no problem riding my bike for eight hours straight. I had a hundred mile rule. I would ride for a hundred miles, I'd pull over somewhere, gas it up, top off the tank, walk around my bike a few times, you know, go take a leak, you know, whatever you had to do, get back on it, ride for another hundred miles. I was good for eight hours a day. Now what I did notice is I started stretching out to 10 or 12 and that, that, that started wearing on me. But uh, nowadays, I don't think I'm good for the eight hours. So that would be something I'd really have to think about. If it was gonna be a long ways and I was, I was planning to ride my bike there, I would absolutely you know, need uh, to you know, maybe make it a two day trip instead of a one or whatever I need to do. Um, how, many, uh, how many times have you actually been there? I guess I already asked that. Uh, the next one would be Bigfoot. Yo, ha, uh, do you believe in Bigfoot? Yo, the awful lot of people do. Yo, if you do, why? 
Uh, have you seen one? You know, uh, do you know anybody who has? Now, that that um, there was a guy that uh, I knew in the Navy. I actually went to boot camp with him, and then we did two tours of Nam together, and we have stayed friends through the years. It's one of those lifetime friendship things, you know. And uh, he was telling me now that this guy. You got to bear in mind if all for as long as I've known him. He has yet to lie to me the first time about anything. I've never known that man to lie to me about anything. And he was telling me a story where him and some of his friends down in some river bottom down there somewhere, it was kind of off in the distance, but they seen something big and it was black and it was moving through the timber. And he said, Jim, he said, I don't know of any man or any animal of any kind that can move through the timber the way that thing did. And he said, oh, Lordy, he said, stink, oh my God. He said, that thing stunk to high heaven, you know. And so, I, 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 I tend to believe this guy, you know, because I have no reason not to believe him. And I've known him long enough to, to be able to qualify it that way. So, you may have some experiences like that. We want to hear about them. Uh, special powers. I've been hearing an awful lot about uh, Sasquatch having special powers, you know, uh, kind of like es extraterrestrial, you know, uh, interdimensional, you know, this, that, and the other, tele telepathic, you know. Um, wh what are your thoughts? Do you think that they have special powers? And now, the fact is that they have been recorded all over the, the planet for as long as there's records or anything, paintings on caveman walls and stuff like that, the, I mean, they have all talked about the Sasquatch, you know. And uh, do you think that they're like a separate species because they're in different parts of the world and that they claim that they have different appearances, you know, in some of these different places? Um, so do you think they're the same species or do you think they're, they're separate species? You know, I, I'm interested in that. Uh, and then, do you have any pics or film? <laughs> if you do, we sure want to see those. Now, uh, number six would be wild game. This is the sixth category that I come up with. And uh, the best way to cook deer. Now, I, as a single man, I'm not a great cook. You know, however, I could cook some wild game. And uh, everybody always bragged on the on the deer, you know, steak that I would cook out on the grill. They just said it was just the best the best ever. And uh, so that, that, uh, that begs the question then, where, where does that all begin? You know, personally, I feel that that begins with the harvesting of the animal in the very first place. A good, quick, you know, kill, ethical kill, you know, well-placed shot so that the animal doesn't suffer, it doesn't go very far, it doesn't have a chance to pump all that adrenaline through the system, you know, is just the very first step and then it goes on from there. You know how what time of the year it is, what the what the temperature is out, how you care and treat for it. Then, uh, if if it is colder, you hang it outside. Do you hang it in the case or not in the case? I personally leave it in the case because it kind of protects things a little bit better. I, I uh, out of all of them I've ever done, that's the way I end up doing them anymore. I hang them in the case. I'll season a deer in a tree if the weather is perfect for it. Uh, for a week, week and a half, you know, that's not a problem. And the meat is so tender, it just does a really good job. Um, and then, of course, when, when you do cut it up, you know, how you, uh, how you, uh, you know, slice it and everything, whether you do thin slice, thick slice, you know, uh, whether you trim off all, you have to make, I make sure I get 100% of that silver skin, you know, and all the fat off of it, period. It's all good, lean red meat, and that's that's the way that I cook it. Um, so, uh, what what do you consider to be best? Uh, well, I'll, I can tell you right now, one of the best deer I ever had to eat was, was a, a good-sized buck. You know, and the reason is every buck you see is not a breeder. You know, I don't think that that buck, I think it was past his time, I think some of the younger bucks out there was was maybe kicking his rear end and not letting him close to the does. Uh, one of my personal favorites is about a two to three year old doe. We absolutely are what we we know that we hear we've heard that forever. Well, it's the same for them too. If you have had two to three years 
out in the field, walking around eating all of the crops in the fields. There are literally dozens uh, and of different nut trees and berries of all kinds and, and uh, greenery, uh, uh, little twigs and stems that they, I mean, uh, there's so many things that these deer eat. And if they have, here in, here in uh, the Midwest, we're, we're really blessed because we've got some of the best tasting deer meat that I've eaten anywhere in the United States, right here. You know, and it's because of what they eat. You know, if a, if a deer is eating a lot of sage, you know, I think it's going to taste a little different because that's their diet, so that's what the meat's going to kind of lean towards, you know. Now, the next thing would be a fawn. I have heard so many people um, talk about, well, that's like veal, you know. Well, to me, it's not. You know, I don't, I won't shoot a fawn in the first place, you know. It could be the biggest buck that ever walked the planet, and you just cancel that, you know, by putting an arrow through him. Uh, but uh, a fawn, if you compare, like a, a, a two to three year old doe, that meat is a bright red. A fawn, a lot of times, is going to have a more pinkish color to it. It's because they've had a, a milk diet for for just until like a couple of months ago, you know, and for the most part, that's what they that's what they've lived on, and again you are what you eat you know and the texture of the meat to me is not as everybody says it's like veal so tender uh, I find it to be a little stringier you know just my personal opinion what do you think um, and then uh, any anything uh, anything that you won't eat out here you know I can right off hand I think of several things there's certain things that I'm not gonna put in my mouth you know but a lot of other people sure eat them you know, and, you know, power to you, you know, and it, it could be a day when none of us will, will have the option of being that picky, but uh, there are a few things I won't eat. Is there anything you won't eat? And uh, what's the weirdest thing you ever did eat? You know, that, that's, <laughs> we're going to get some, some crazy answers on that one, I can already tell. Uh, and then the, the next question is, would you eat it again? You know, if, if you did that one time, would you turn around and do it again? Uh, yes, you know, that's a definite, uh, a definite maybe on that one. Uh, so now I think you get the idea of what, what we're doing here. And this is just, I just picked six topics just to get this started. We are going to have so many different streams of subject matter, you know, and touching on so many different topics. So you're going to need to come and get, get involved in this stuff and take part in it. There's going to be some really funny stuff here. Uh, but then there's going to be some really good information on top of that. Uh, we we want to hear from you. Uh, this is going to be really fun. Uh, you know, this this is your podcast. You know, it really is. You know, because of your involvement in it, this is your podcast. And uh, let's just get the fun going here. Let's let's get this. Let's begin. You know, so this is OJ and out.